Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm Michela Bariletti and I'm the Analytical Manager of the EMEA Project Finance Team. I'm delighted to be joined today by Michael Wilkins, uh, Managing Director in the Infrastructure Group, who is here today to talk about the UK Student Accommodation Projects uh, on the back of a recently published article. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can start by um, explaining the public, uh, uh, the audience, why actually the UK Student Accommodation Project bond issuance has actually increased over th recently? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think in the UK, um, student accommodation projects are well-established asset class, often linked to very long-term leases from very creditworthy universities. Um, it, it's an asset class investors feel comfortable with. Traditionally, it's been funded by bank debt and equity, mm -hmm. but because institutional investors are looking for capital market debt uh, investments, uh, it's an obvious asset class for them to invest in. And this year alone, we've seen nearly £800 million sterling of issuance in bonds for student accommodation projects. And the interesting thing is that several key investors, like Legal in general, for example, have bought into these projects in a big way. In the case of Hertfordshire, for example, they bought all the debt from the bond transaction. So this shows that there's a huge appetite for this type of debt, you know, especially when it's long dated. In the case mm -hmm. of Hertfordshire, it was 41 years. You don't typically see that in the bank market. And also, in some cases, for example, with Edinburgh University, the debt is also inflation linked. And again, there's a lot of appetite amongst insurance mm -hmm. companies and pension funds for inflation linked debt. So it ticks all the boxes. Oh, right. And what about um, the main credit risk underlying this sort of uh, transaction yeah. um, in the student accommodation space? Well, the key, the key credit risks on student projects really relate to um, price and demand or volume. Uh, th these projects are exposed to the amount of students actually taking up the rooms. So that's the volume risk or demand risk. And there's also the price or the rental level mm -hmm. risk. And Typically, the project company will take both of those risks, um, but not on a 100% unmitigated basis. Mm -hmm. What we typically see in the deals that we looked at recently is that there are some level of um, mitigating factors. For example, there could be a minimum guarantee level coming from the university to take away some of the volume risk, uh, or there could be some incentives for the university to ensure that um, the rental levels increase by at least inflation or possibly more. Um, and for example, in a Hertfordshire transaction, there was a gain uh, sharing mechanism so that if they increase rents by above inflation, half of that would go to Hertfordshire and half to the project company. So there are various mechanisms put in place to try and mitigate these key risks of price and volume. Right. Um, this characteristic that you have mentioned are mainly related to the operation phase of the transaction. Um, probably to conclude, uh, do you think that the transaction in the student accommodation space can achieve investment grade if they have construction risk? Yeah, I think this is quite an interesting point that uh, two of the transactions we've rated this year, both Hertfordshire and Edinburgh, both are done on a pre-completion basis. In other words, there is construction risk. So when we look at projects with construction risk, we have to apply our criteria on counterparty for construction and operation counterparties. Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of Hertfordshire, the uh, main construction counterparty was the French contractor Bouygues, which rated triple B plus, and that transaction was actually rated A minus. So having a strong contractor there was an important part of getting around the construction risk issue. There are other factors as well, such as internal and external liquidity provision. In the case of Edinburgh, uh, the contractor exposure there, uh, that was the deal uh, involving Balfour Beatty, um, meant that we had to look at it from the point of view of whether Balfour Beatty could be replaced. And we went through the whole scenario analysis of, of whether there would be sufficient liquidity to replace the contractor in the event that, that should happen. And, and there was. So we were able to get that uh, transaction to a triple B underlying rating despite the fact that the contractor probably wasn't at that level. So yes is the answer. We can get investment grade ratings uh, with construction risk being in the project from the outset. Okay. Thank you, Michael. This concludes this edition of Credit Methods TV. Goodbye.